Neither. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Go ahead and raise your right hand. Do you, uh, <clears throat> do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide is true and accurate? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Jordy. Please state your name. Matthew Vaughn. And Mr. Vaughn, you're a landowner in Emmett County and have a parcel of ground that's being targeted by this proposed hazardous pipeline. Is that right? Yes. And in preparation for today and your opposition to the project in eminent domain, you caused to be filed, uh, prepared and filed, what's called pre-filed testimony. Is that right? Yes. And if we were to go through all of those same questions, would the answers you gave in your written submission be substantially similar to what you would tell us today? Yes. Can you think of any material errors or corrections that need to be made? No. Do you have any uh, updates based on any factual uh, scenarios or changes since the time of your submission? Uh, no. Uh, at this time, I would um, offer exhibits 177 through 183. Are there objections? Uh, to the extent that's the pre-filed testimony and exhibits, no, there are no objections. Okay. Did you want to weigh in, Mr. Whipple, or are you just put your card up for questions? All right. Uh, the board will admit and give the way to. Thank you. At this time, sir, some other folks might have questions. Sorry, Mr. Taylor. Mr. Whipple will beat you to it. Go ahead, Mr. Whipple. Um, I promise I won't be too long, Mr. Taylor. Um, Mr. Vaughan, I just want to ask a couple questions uh, about some of the zoning stuff you have in your um, pre-filed testimony. Are you aware that Emma County has adopted a zoning ordinance related to pipelines? Yes. Are you at least generally familiar with the details of that? I think it's a thousand feet for many residents or buildings possibly the proposed route has several sites that are not in compliance with that ordinance and did you participate in any of the public hearings or process locally as the county was adopting that ordinance I did not know do you generally support that ordinance Yes. How does it interact with your property and the way that you'd like to use your land? The pipeline cuts through the middle of the farm that I bought in 09. And I purchased a tile plow <laughs> and started to pattern tile this farm every 40 feet four inch tile lines, like they're in my attachments to the tile map. And when they cross through there, they're gonna cut 15 to 20 different tile lines. There's also another 30 acres that needs to be pattern tiled every 40 feet that we put on pause because once you dig through the bottom of a tile line, it can never be put back the same. Eventually, Four inch tile on this farm is extremely flat. So the tile is running with three quarters of an inch of fall and a hundred feet. So that's not very much. You rely on gravity for tile lines to work. And if you dig through the bottom, eventually it will settle no matter what you do some. And even two inches on a four inch tile line cuts your capacity well over in half. Eventually, the entire tile system I put in will start to fill in with dirt, whether it's 5, 10, 15 years, and basically be useless unless you completely replace it. And I've talked with various contractors, and they're not interested in tiling over the top of a hazardous pipeline. They've got plenty of other work to do. So it's going to impact my ability to pay for the farm I bought with a young farmer loan and not only will it affect 
the land to the north where they cut the tie lines, it's going to fill in the whole system that I put in. Basically, none of it will be effective eventually. I guess, Mr. Vaughn, could you address whether if, if the county were allowed to enforce the, the requirements that it adopted in the ordinance, would it change the route across your property? I would assume that yes, there would not be any reason to go through their property at all then. Would it, do you currently have any other plans for the use of the land, building any new structures that if the route moved would impact that? Possibly we also have land just to the south of that route that was a potential site for a home, which obviously I wouldn't want to build a house in a kill zone. So that would affect that. I guess this proposed route through our area is going to Minnesota, which has not, someone hasn't done anything as far as permitting or there's no reason for a pipeline to go there. Also, the fact that there's nowhere to really sequester it either, I don't see any point in the whole project myself. Okay, thank you, sir. Not so much an objection, but just a clarification. Can we put the KMZ up for just a, a, a moment? Sure. Also, just to clear up, uh, heads up, uh, Ms. Kaufman, your mic's on. Oh, sorry. It's okay. I just want to make sure we're talking about the same thing. I'm just concerned when Mr. Bowen talked about this going through the the middle of the farm and what I am showing is clipping a corner. I just want to make sure and it, it may be that the witness views that as going through the middle of the farm. I just want to make sure that we're not on different parcels or, or looking at different Zoom out a little here. bit. Yeah. <laughs> so my dad owns the north 30 acres of that because of the young farm alone, they didn't feel like they would approve it if I purchased the whole item. I'm the tenant on the whole piece. Okay. So I that's just, why. I, just I procedurally, I want to be is, be clear because Dennis is also testifying. And my understanding was that they were going to be dividing their testimony based on the, the parcels. And I just want to make sure we're talking about the same things is all. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Taylor. Well, can you uh, take the KMZ and, and uh, um, bring it out a bit so we can see more? Okay, okay, that's fine. Uh, 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 now I understand. <clears throat> um, And is that the Minnesota border on the north edge of your property? Yes, the okay. white line up. Yeah, that's the state right. line right there. Right, okay. And um, you said that Minnesota uh, has not granted a permit. Do you know what the status of things are up there uh, in terms of uh, permitting? I'm not aware that anything's really move forward up there at all, I don't think. Um, you said in your written testimony that uh, you've not tilled this land. So does that mean you're growing crops, but you're doing it in no-till? Uh, this is tilled, but um, I don't know if you can pull up my attachments. There's an area... There's a large culvert in the road here, and there's about all the land to the north of here surface drains through here during heavy rain or snow runoff. So we don't do any tillage through that. Oh, it's 15 feet wide, because if you do any tillage through there, when the water comes down through here, it will erode to whatever depth you did tillage. If it's six feet, it'll erode six feet. If it's six inches, it'll erode six inches. So 
proposed pipeline is going to go through that area. There's also a large 16-inch main tile through there that's going to create a lot of water problems if you're trying to build a pipe. Unless it's a drought, then maybe it'll work. So the area that you don't till, do you grow crops there? Yes, we still okay. do grow crops there, but it obviously yields aren't as good. But if the dirt washes away, it's worth nothing. So we don't want to make an impassable ravine you can't cross. Um, in terms of your drainage tile, um, do you understand that Summit says that they will put the pipeline beneath your tile at least two feet and the tile won't be damaged? I guess that's what I've heard. I've never had Summit talk to me, so I really can't say. Well, do you I think that would, would solve your concerns if they could do that? Once you dig underneath the base of the tile, you can never get it back the same, no matter what you do. That's why when you're installing tile, you're very careful not to get below grade, because once you're below grade, you can never get that back, especially in the heavy clay organic soils we have. They will settle. If you disturb them, they will settle. They, you can get them sort of okay, but you're eventually going to have to go back and replace that system. It won't. It'll kind of work for a while. Um, are you aware that Summit has said that they would repair any any broken or damaged tile? If they feel they need to. If it's because of their issues, I guess. I don't know. Like I said, I've never received an easement never talked to a land agent, nothing. Has an agent tried to talk to you, or have they not even tried? No. I found out they apparently must have moved the route south some, and that's why they clipped my parcel. Found that out the day after Christmas because I got a lawsuit that they were suing me. So then we did some research and found out, oh, it looks like to move the line a little bit farther south, now it's clipping the corner of my property. That's So did you ever talk to a summit agent about uh, an alternative route or, or uh, changing the route somehow? I haven't talked to summit at all. Like I stated, generally when someone's suing you, it's probably best not to have any contact with them. And I guess maybe I'm confused again, which seems to be a regular occurrence. Um, your parcel is just the area uh, that's clipped by the the pipeline. Is that correct? Yeah, the dark red line's not very clear on the big screen. Right. On the small screen, uh, it's okay. apparently and, right. And so the, the red area north of that, the red line is not yours? Correct. My okay. father owns it, but I farm the entire parcel. Okay. Okay. Um, you mentioned that you have some purebred cattle on your property? Yes, we're working on improving our herd. And, and enough. Can you zoom that map out a little bit? Do you want to bring the, the map out a little bit so we can see more of it? Is that what you want? Yes. So, uh, the cattle are on your property, though, right, or not? Well, they are... I guess the proposed route's over here, but... Yeah, the white line is the proposed route. We have pasture just right this corner is very close and being a low-lying area which is where co2 would congregate is that your land it's land i run it's like father's oh. land down here it's not directly on the route but it's it is actually very close down that and any 
Yeah, so river crossing is probably an area of concern for a possible problems. And with the cattle being all in that area, you could wipe out generations of breeding to try and improve the breed in a matter of minutes. And this applies to all the people that have cattle along the river, which is quite a few head. And all that can be wiped out. Uh, Do the cattle graze or are they in an uh, an open feedlot? They're grazing. This would be summer, I guess. If um, some were willing to move the pipeline route, do you have a suggested alternative? Well, I think they possibly have easements with some people to the west of us. They could possibly go here because I know there's not one over here and we're not interested in it. Prefer it's not approved at all since my livestock and my family spend a lot of time in the whatever you want to call it too close to the pipeline in the event of a incident, I guess. Have the owners, or whatever, have the owners uh, of the land just west of yours signed an easement, or do you know? I think they have. I don't, I'm not 100% sure I believe they have, though. Okay. Thank you. That's all the questions I have. Ms. Height? Hello, Mr. Fallon. I'm Chris Height. I'm a landowner. Uh, Just, I too was looking at the pretrial testimony, and I had a question about where it talked about the lawsuit, and I was that from the summit lawsuit or another? Yeah, summit served me the day after Christmas that I was being sued. Um, was it the surveying issue or something? Okay, okay. Happy so, holidays. Yeah. So do you? Um, do you, you feel like the efforts have been forced on you to uh, undertake this um, uh, as a result from some lawsuit and so forth? Has that caused you financial hardship or health problems? It's caused a lot of aggravation, a lot of time spent trying to figure out what's going on, what you need to be doing. Why are we spending all this time and money on something that doesn't really have an end game other than profit? So do you believe this project is for the public good necessity and and public benefit? I think it's actually a negative for the public because growing crops need CO2. If you start to reduce the CO2 in the air, yields will probably begin to go down. Because we're not, the amount of CO2 in the air is not at the level that growing plants do the best at. It's actually below that. So all the crops, grass, trees, everything is removing CO2 on its own. I don't see any reason to pump it all the way, I guess, to nowhere as of right now. Thank you, sir. Ms. Kaufman. I just wanted to clarify a little bit. Um, if I understand in your pre filed testimony, you said uh, some did not try to talk to you in person and you never got an offer from them. Is that correct? That is correct. And they sued you the day after Christmas for 
Do you want me to sign survey, up? They write to survey, I believe. They wanted to survey. Did you even know they were trying to obtain your land? If you no, didn't. I like I said, I was I never received an initial easement, an offer, nothing. The only reason we found out was the lawsuit, and then we started to look into it and realize well, it looks like they've moved the line a little bit. Now they're clipping the corner of mine. Hmm. Okay. Ha, um, have you had to spend a lot of money on defending yourself? In that? Is the lawsuit ongoing still? No, it was dropped about two weeks before it was supposed to happen. So we had six months of wondering what's going on, what do we have to do. <laughs> Not, I wasn't sure. It's just a lot of extra irritation over the normal stuff you have going on in the operator farm. But you, um, well, I'll move on to a different question, but I'm confused by that a bit. Um, your cattle are not on this land that is being shown, but you do own some cattle close to the pipeline on a different piece of ground. Is that correct? Yes, in the summer they're actually very close to the corner where it crosses the river in the area of... Is it a large herd? Do you have a large herd? Is this a primary part? Uh, do you get a lot of revenue from in your farm operation from your cattle? That's about 40, 45 head, but they're we're building a purebred Simmental herd, so they're hopefully more valuable than just general stock cows, I guess. They're breeding animals. And ha have you had contact with someone? Did you, you, the suit was dropped, so you didn't have to face him, in, but have you ever had any contact with Summit? No. Director, otherwise? <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Ms. Coles? Good afternoon, Mr. Ballin, Jean Colas, also a landowner. I have questions pertaining to the lawsuit. You indicated that you refused them the right to survey your land, correct? I never really was asked. So why did they sue you? I suppose that'd be a good question for them. They, they didn't have a complaint before they served you? Just got a lawsuit the day after Christmas. You indicated that you were not aware that they were clipping your proper property until you received the Exhibit H map. Is that correct? Yes. So was the lawsuit related to the land that your father has ownership of? I guess that's possible. They were just trying to lump us together. I don't know. So you had absolutely no communication. They just, boom. Uh, with no knowledge, any reason, no contact, they sued you, and you had a great deal of expense that you went to. Correct. Was your father also sued? Yes. You indicated they dropped the lawsuit. Was that prior to the IUB hearing, or what? what's the time frame on that? I think it was, it was supposed to be in July. I think it was about maybe a week or two before the hearing was supposed to be, it was officially dropped, I think. So you said around Christmas, so when you retain, you're, you're pertaining to the Christmas time of 2022? Yes. They dropped the lawsuit. Have they compensated you for your expenses? Like I said, I haven't had any contact with them, so no. But it was a big surprise that they made an adjustment that your land was clipped where it wasn't initially. You don't know. I yeah, I guess I was not. I was not on the original proposed route. My dad was, but I was not, and I guess I did not. Can you clarify for me again, or state I couldn't quite hear? When did you purchase this 
Bob. 2009. 2009. The money that you spent to purchase and get a loan on this property, you and your father, do you feel that installation of a CO2 pipeline will devalue the land and the expense that you went to to purchase this property? Yes, it will cut the value significantly because of the route that's going through there. And this is poorly drained soils that requires pattern tiling to be productive. Before I installed that tile, the yields were not very good. They've improved dramatically in the areas I've tiled. So affecting that system is going to cause the value of the land to drop and also the value to me of being able to farm it and try and make the payments to pay for the farm. So when you purchased that, since you purchased that farm, you've had excessive expenditures related to installing pattern tile for future improvement on the land, correct? Yes. Do you know approximately how much you've had to spend for that? Well, since I did it myself, that saves some, but if you had to hire it commercially, it would be, I feel like they're over a thousand dollars an acre to pattern tile farms now. And I've done I installed over 75,000 feet in that farm total. So you're basically taking not good tillable land and have improved it because your ownership. Yes. And as a result of that, if the pipeline goes through, that investment and your improvements are negated by the value of what your land will be worth. Correct. No further questions. Thank you. Ms. Greg Higgin. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, could we go to page 244 of his direct testimony? I just have some questions about your tile map to start with here. Okay, is this your tile map? Correct. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And the parcel that you own can you kind of describe where it's at on this? Because it looks like all the parcels are on here. I believe it's approximately about through here. So about halfway down? Yeah, would be your the north, north the north boundary. Yeah. Okay. And so, where the proposed pipeline route would be across those the green lines, the yeah, green probably. vertical lines there. Without being able to superimpose down there for sure, I think roughly it's going to be probably about here, and then it looks like through here. Okay. In the system, and I mean, it all ties together. So that's why I was saying when you disturb this, eventually it will start to fill in with dirt and it just fills the whole thing in. It needs to be, the rest of this needs to be done the same, but we've paused that because I don't know what, it'd be better to put it in about five years after the project was done, but I'm not really sure I want to install a tile over the top of that. I don't contractors we visited with said that they have enough work to do they don't need to mess with that headache so uh, so those the green uh, vertical lines there that's underground tile correct yes okay and what size tile is that that's four inch there okay that's four inch 40 foot spacing and 40 foot spacing and then how deep is that do you know that's going to be three and a half to five, depending. Like I said, this is a pretty flat. You now there's some small hills in here. It could be four and a half to five, but try to stay three, three and a half if you can, unless you have to go deeper to get through a hill to maintain your fall. And then the red vertical lines, what's the difference? Or is that? I was just done a different year. Okay. This is four inch also. These are six inch mains. 
and all this down here was four. And so then the, this long one is a 16 inch private main that goes up across the road. So it would cross that as well at some point, whether yes. it's on your property or Dave's yeah, property. it's going to have to go across all of these. Do you know how deep that uh, private main is? It's four feet, maybe. I know it's not very deep. It's very flat, so it, that's why it's so large to carry any water flow. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, so, just to orientate myself of where this is at along the route, is this the this is the lateral that goes up into Minnesota? Correct. Okay. And what it is it. it is it connecting a plant in Minnesota down to the main line farther south of you? I guess if they pursue it in Minnesota, as of now, there's not really anything going on in Minnesota, but I guess that's, I assume, their proposed idea. And so if the, the Minnesota permit isn't received, would it make sense to build the route through this part of your property? No, there's not really any need for this line if you're not going to Minnesota. Thank you. Uh, did you attend any informational meetings for the pipeline? I did not. I think they had one in the middle of harvest 2021, maybe. I wasn't on the proposed road. I had other things to be doing. Were you aware that it was going through your, your dad's property? I guess I think he maybe had received something about it. But he never talked. Did he ever talk to you about it or? I Did you know there was a pipeline the, in the area? I guess, I guess, yes, we were aware that it was okay. proposed through there. And I decided the very first meeting, middle of combine, and I had other stuff to do. So, Did you ever receive restricted certified mail notifying you of the request to land survey? Was that ever sent to you? Yes. Okay. Would that have been sent um, earlier in 2022? I'm not sure. I guess um, I don't think I received anything in 2022. I think there was. I'm not sure. They tried. There was some certified stuff sent, possibly in pertaining to surveying, but I was already being sued, so I refused it. So you. What you're telling me is you did not receive any notice of the land survey until after the lawsuit was filed? Correct. Was anything attempted to be sent to you that you refused then prior to the lawsuit? I don't believe so. Okay. Thank you for your time. No further questions. Okay. If there's no further questions, uh, Mr. Jordy for redirect. Thank you. So, oh, Kurt, sorry, Board Member Burns had a question. He already messaged me. I had it written down. Board Member Burns? Go ahead, Mr. Jory. I think Ms. Grunhagen got into the depth of what I was trying to put together, and I think Ms. Colas also touched on some of my questions, so the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you. Um, to clear up some things on this lawsuit and some of the back and forth there, um, do you recollect, sir, that we were set to go to trial on that matter on July 19th of 2023 and Summit filed a motion to cancel the trial on July 7th? Does that sound about right? Yeah, I know it was later in July and it was only yeah, two weeks before, so it was fairly close. And, and that's the lawsuit where they sued you requesting an immediate injunction because it was just so important for them to have these survey rights. And then after seven months of legal fees and headaches, they just said, just kidding, and dismissed it, right? That's the way it seemed to go, yes. Yeah. And, and haven't, <clears throat> haven't uh, offered to pay even one penny for that time and expense, right? Correct. Now, uh, you're in the part of Emmett County that is uh, north of the um, ethanol plant in Dickinson, the Green Plains Superior plant. And so the entire route, proposed route in Emmett County, you understand, is to get into Minnesota and to connect up with a single 
Minnesota ethanol plant. Is that your understanding? That yes. And and so it certainly isn't necessary to have eminent domain on, on your parcel, nor is it convenient um, to impact that Iowa land for the benefit of, of a some privately owned ethanol plant in Minnesota, would you agree? Yes. And therefore, if any part of this pipeline is approved, certainly the, none of the route through Emmett County or across your ground should be approved, would you agree? Yes. Related to the setback in Emmett County, is your understanding that setback was um, put into existence uh, many months ago? Or at yes. least a handful of months ago? It's been a while ago, yeah. Yeah. And I think you said it was a thousand foot setback, is that right? As far as I remember, yeah, I think it's 7,000 feet from. If it had to be a residence or if it was just buildings, because I know there's hog buildings and cattle feed lots and stuff within that, within a thousand feet on that proposed road. And, and given that the proposed pipeline diameter that would cross your field, at least at this point, is eight inches, and since this, the commencement of these proceedings, you've learned that a uh, the toxic plume could travel at least 1,855 feet from an 8-inch pipeline, would, would you suggest that Emmett County's setback is actually insufficient? It's Yeah, it's probably not enough, but I guess they had to start somewhere. Right. And, of course, when you're starting somewhere, you do that based on the best available information, and if Summit is stiff-arming counties and, and the public and not giving the, the correct and accurate setback data, starting at a 1,000 foot was probably the best they could do at yeah, the time. Yeah, they probably just come up with something to put out there if there hasn't been any official plume release studies put out in Iowa that I know. I think there was something mentioned in South Dakota maybe on one on a different project. but it, And... You're also aware, aren't you, that on the Exhibit H filing that Summit has requested the legal right from this board to grant Summit the ability to place up to a 24-inch pipeline across your property, right? Yes. Okay. And so if an 8-inch pipeline, the hazard distance is at least 1,855 feet, and we've learned yesterday that the 20-inch uh, pipeline is at least 2,920 feet. Would you think that a 24-inch pipeline, the setback would need to be at least 3,000 feet? I would say yes. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. I don't have any more questions for you. Thank you, sir. You are dismissed. We appreciate it. Uh, your next witness, Mr. Jordy. I hope we have uh, Robert Watts online. Okay. While we're getting Robert, thank you, Chuck. That's it. 